Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling, Communications Manager for Friends of Science Society. Are Canadians causing global warming? Maybe, but it's not what you think. We talked with Ken Gregory, past director of Friends of Science, who has done an in-depth review of the favorite climate model of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the Canadian model that projects global warming, and he says it runs too hot, not by a bit, but a lot. The Canadian climate model is used by the IPCC to justify predictions of extreme anthropogenic warming, despite the fact that the model bears no resemblance to reality. The IPCC ignores most natural causes of climate changes and misattributes natural climate change to greenhouse gas emissions. So why is this a Canadian climate model? Where does it come from? And why is this important to us non-scientists? The Canadian Centre for Climate Modelling and Analysis, located at the University of Victoria in British Columbia, submitted five runs of its climate model for use in the fifth assessment report. The climate model produces one of the most extreme warming projections of all the 30 models evaluated by the IPCC. The model badly fails to match the surface and atmospheric temperature observations, both globally and regionally. This first graph compares the near-surface global temperatures to the model runs. This graph shows that the computer model simulation after 1983 produces too much warming compared to the observations. The discrepancy between the model and the observations increased dramatically after 1998, as there has been no global near-surface warming during the last 16 years. The model temperature warming rate, as determined by the best fit linear line from 1979 to 2013, is 225% of the average of the observations. 225 <laughs> percent? That seems to be an extremely large margin of error. What could cause that? The large errors are primarily due to incorrect assumptions about water vapor and cloud changes. The climate model assumes that water vapor, the most important greenhouse gas, would increase in the upper atmosphere in response to the small warming effect from carbon dioxide emissions. The percentage change in water vapor has over five times the effect on temperature as the same percentage change of carbon dioxide. Contrary to the model assumptions, radiosan humidity data show declining water vapor in the upper atmosphere. So Canadian taxpayers are funding climate models that project warmer than reality temperatures and governments around the world are making policy based on these simulations instead of the evidence? Read the full report. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.